Do you know how big product companies handle millions of transactions without any major issues? How do they ensure data consistency, handle failures gracefully and make their systems scalable and fault tolerant? Well, that's exactly what you'll get to know in this course, where we will dive deep into the world of microservices, distributed transactions and event-driven systems. Now moving on to who is this course is for, if you are a backend developer looking to level up, a software engineer exploring event-driven architectures or just someone passionate about building scalable systems then you are in the right place. In this course, we won't just learn about concepts, but we will build a real world, a production ready system from scratch. Now let's cover what you will exactly learn from this course. By the end of this course, you will gain hands on experience in building microservices using Node.js with Express 5 or even Go to some extent that I'm still exploring, managing data consistencies with Kafka events and Saga patterns, implementing CQRS to optimize read write performance, using PostgreSQL for transactions and Redis for caching, event driven communication with Kafka, concurrency and fault tolerance in distributed systems event replay and debugging strategies, observability and monitoring with Grafana and Prometheus. They are just a very high level points, we'll be going dive deeper into each of these points. As this is a very first video in the course as an introduction, let's see how the course is structured as of now. Now as you can see from the header, it's a flexible approach. The reason it is because the whole project is still in progress which will be going in parallel along with the course. This course is not like an already developed project where I'll try to cover all the positive scenarios. No, that's not going to happen. At this stage, 30% of the project itself is completed. So I'll basically try to do this in parallel and also try to explain the mistakes what I learned across the whole course itself. So again, this is not like a course as you can treat this as an ongoing project and I'll share my thoughts across the whole development. So in short, to make things realistic and practical, we will be building a complete banking backend microservices system, a project that will challenge you to think like a real world architect. This is a very rough plan of the core structure. Starting with first, we set up our microservices foundation. Then we dive deep into Kafka based communication. Then we design Saga based distributed transactions for consistency. We also implement CQRS separating commands from queries. And finally, we will ensure our system is scalable, fault tolerant and production ready, including some performance testing. Don't worry if any of these terminologies are new to you. I'll be covering all these concepts during this real world project. And very important point I want to highlight is I won't be writing line by line of the code because that's really takes a lot of time in general, right? So I'll be highlighting most of the code snippets and also I will explain why we are doing in that specific fashion. Alright, that's a heads up for the entire course structure that you can expect from this course. I'll just give a sneak peek of the architecture overview. So this is a very rough architecture overview. Things might change slightly but overall we'll be using Postgres for most of the services and also for the and also MongoDB as of now for notification service. Redis of course to store the tokens and for any quick reads. And also we have the API gateway client you can here you can assume that as a Postman or a Bruno API client. That's it. Again, as you can notice, this is like there's a tilde operator over here, meaning that this is kind of a probable architecture. Things might slightly change, but this is just to give you an overview of the architecture and also set an expectation. And also these these services currently I've been writing in Node.js, but I'm thinking if I can move some of the services to Go language as well. So let me know in the comments if you need any, any services in Go. Most probably I'll port transaction service from Node.js to Go language. This might take a while, but uh, this is just a heads up. Also, if you're new to Kafka or Redis, I have so many videos released on those topics. So please try to watch those before you start on this course. All right, so what's next? We'll start with a more in-depth architecture overview and API gateway service development. We'll start from scratch, so don't worry about it. Again, I just want to emphasize on a point that I won't be writing each line by line. That actually takes a lot of time and doesn't make sense, right? So I'll be highlighting all the code snippets wherever it's required and also explain the concepts during the code walkthroughs and also development. So on to the expectations, as I said, project development is actually going in parallel. I'm working hard to complete the whole project, but this will take a while. And overall, I can see that this kind of no, not turn into a course, but more of a peer to peer project development. We'll see down the line how this goes. And also I'm building this project in parallel. Design decisions might go wrong. I might realize later. So you'll learn, improve and repeat. And of course, I'll be sharing all these learnings with you guys. Also remember the architecture overview diagram that also might change slightly. Like I might introduce some of the services down the line. We can add so many. So this banking domain itself is so vast, right? So we can introduce so many domain level services again as a microservices like payments, debit card, credit card and all that stuff. So stay tuned. We'll see based on the feedback and response I get from this course introduction, I'll see how I can plan for the next set of features. That's pretty much for the introduction video. However, 
By the end of this course, you won't just understand microservices. You will be building a complete production ready event driven system along with me, learning from real world mistakes and best practices along the way. That's all for this video. I hope this course will be excited and helpful for you guys. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.